Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Yang Rui in Beijing. Recently, a Chinese student in the University of Iowa was expelled by the university after a feigned threat online to shoot his professor if he fails his exams. The expelled student feels he has been wronged and claimed that he had no actual malicious intentions against his professors. The case has triggered heated discussion online in China. Should the student have been expelled by the university? What are the boundaries of freedom of speech? As more Chinese students study in the United States, what lessons should they learn from the incident? To discuss all these issues today, I am pleased to be joined by Edward Lehman, managing director of Lehman Li and Xu, and Tao Jingzhou, managing partner of Deckard LLP China practice. Also, Professor Shen Bin from Tsinghua University will join our discussion on the phone. But before we get started, let's look at this background report. It all started with a message on social media. The Chinese student Ni Hangsheng, who was expelled from the University of Iowa, posted, "I've been working so hard this semester. If the school still doesn't let me pass, I will let the professor feel the fear like Lu Gong." The fear of Lu Gong refers to a tragedy in the university in 1991. Chinese student Lu Gong shot and killed five people. Before turning the gun on himself after failing to win an academic award, Ni's post was regarded as a real threat and earned him a prompt recall of his student visa. His two firearms, although legally obtained, were taken away from him along with his permits. Ni's father confirmed that his son had returned to China, but denied the allegations of a deportation. He said currently Ni was seeking legal advice. My son has done an inappropriate thing. I believe that the confiscation of his firearms would have been a more reasonable punishment. Isn't deportation a bit too much? said Ni's father. Ni himself also confirmed that he intended no threat, but the incident is still fermenting on Chinese social media, triggering debates about education and the freedom of speech. Many children go abroad at an early age with an immature outlook on life and the world. Their parents pay their education fees, but lack control of their character education. So their children lack basic judgments of right and wrong and legal awareness," wrote one netizen. Gentlemen, do you think the university authorities in Iowa have overreacted to the case, Mr. Tao?、Um, it's certainly a, a bad joke, and、uh, it's a bad joke. It, yeah, if we put this. Into context of 9/11, plus what happened in that exact university several years ago regarding another Chinese student, I think、uh, it's unfortunate that university should take such kind of a disciplinary action、uh, against this student. And many of those in China who have、uh, been involved in the online debate, who follow this process in the University of Alva, said, "Well." Um, they they were surprised that the student uh, called uh, Ni Hanxiang、mm. fails to be handed over to the police station. Instead, he was first of all handed over to the university authorities、uh, over a disciplinary、uh, matter. Are you surprised that it's been treated in such a way? You know, to a certain extent, yes. Only because it reminds me that this was written in Chinese language actually initially. So there must have been someone from the, in the Chinese community who must have alerted the authorities, I would imagine, or someone from the staff. But it,、um, so that's the first thing. Second thing, I agree with you. I mean, the university did address it. They have what they call kind of local parentis, which is these are people that are not quite twenty-one. Many of them at the university, so they have to keep it super protected for for those reasons, and they, they have a higher standard probably in protecting it. And, and like uh, Professor Ta- uh, Mr. Tao said, is that Uh, they did have this incident with Lu Gong, 1991, a long, long time ago. But it still rings and resonates. It was a, uh, the head of the physics department, the、uh, and at Chinese National was also killed. So there were there were four people that was quite prominent.、Uh, he was looking to kill the、uh, the university、uh, president as well, and so that happened. And I think those are very raw nerves. But it, it, it dances. I think that Mr. Ni,、nee, he deserves representation. I, I agree that the father probably、uh, that he wasn't deported. He left voluntarily. But he needs representation. That's what our country is all about. I'll I'll come back to、uh, take a second look at the alleged deportation concerning、uh, the case of Ni Hanxiang. Let me cross over first of all to. Uh, Uh, Professor Shen Bin from Tsinghua University for his comments on what's happened to this poor student who has been expelled by the University of Iowa. 
Hello, Professor Shi. What was the uh, thing that crossed your mind in the immediate aftermath of hearing this? Upon hearing this, uh, do you think this is an isolated, ca isolated case? Because in recent years, uh, more and more Chinese students have been expelled or uh, sentenced to years of imprisonment in the United States for different cases. Now, what do you think of this, uh, the nature of this sensational case? Uh, I think this kind of uh, incident actually flagged uh, lack of media literacy and also uh, sort of, uh, I would say, an uh, incapability of intercultural communication. Uh, and you can see from this uh, case that uh, Chinese students still didn't realize how this kind of hate speech, or I would say a sort of a risky speech, would create a sensation on campus. But usually I think this kind of uh, speech would be tolerated in Chinese scenario. So this is exactly what I would say, how they would understand how to use social media and how they can actually communicate in an intercultural context. Yeah, here are some uh, very interesting points uh, in our discussion. Um, uh, Professor Shambian put his finger on the issue of uh, online uh, threat or uh, hate speech. Um, do you think this is a hate speech? Um, and personally, I'm uh, wondering aloud why Back in the year 1991, a Chinese student called Lu Gang killed mm. five uh, and uh, uh, paralyzed a sixth mm. after he failed to win the academic uh, uh, award. Now, why again this Chinese student is allowed to have firearms? Now, should this have happened in a Chinese university, I'm 100% sure that the school authorities uh, would have made a very draconian uh, stipulation about or banning all students from having any weaponry or even knives. So, so what do you think of this, uh, th this uh, gun culture or culture of uh, fears after 911? I, I think first, carry the gun is a constitutional right. A university protected by the Second Amendment yeah. cannot prohibit a student with a reach the standard to carry the gun in the U.S. Of course, in the Chinese context, this wouldn't happen because in China you cannot carry the gun. So, um, so what the university can do? Uh, I think what a student should do is he should be careful of having such a kind of a statement in his social media, considering the past unfortunate, uh, you know, uh, Experience. A sense of history way. might be very important, useful yeah. for Chinese students. Uh, for example, a former classmate of mine uh, mm. back in the early 1980s uh, told me in one of the emails that uh, the very first thing he did when he entered the British University was that he was taken to a graveyard by his professor uh, showing uh, how diligent how he, uh, a Chinese student, would pay a heavy price for being diligent, for working so hard around the clock without paying sufficient attention to his health, and he dropped dead, you know, oh. because working too hard, because of working too hard. Now, in the case of uh, a, a University of Iowa, this man called Lu Gang killed mm. five, right. and he should have done some homework about the history of this university. I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, have kept us wondering why this tragedy occurred again. Yeah, I mean, I, I think again, this, if it was a drug, it was in very poor taste. I, I do agree with that. I, I also think that there, that First Amendment rights should be uh, should be maintained, and even freedom of speech. Freedom of speech should be maintained. Uh, and and the, the test is a, a case called Shank versus the United States. And Oliver Wendell Holmes said you can't falsely yell uh, fire in a movie crowded movie theater. That mm -hmm. that would be there's danger, potential danger, and there would be cause and effect if that happened. So. Freedom Neither would you yell that I have a bomb on board a plane. Correct. Right. So, so th and those things are prohibited uh, because it would bring safety. Uh, safety issues would be involved, and so that's what I think happened in this particular case. I think we have to look at not only the is the university itself and the and the guidelines and the conduct. And, and Mr. Nee should have been uh, made available that information, but whether he understood it is another thing. But it does seem like Mr. Nee has embraced the Second Amendment and embraced. He's, he was legally carrying the firearms, and, uh, and no harm came to anyone from. Yes, that indeed. Firearm. On the surface, Professor. Are you with us on the phone? Uh, on the surface of the issue, it seems uh, this Chinese student who is called Ni Hanxiang is protected by 
both the First Amendment and Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. he, he has a right to bear firearms uh, protected by the Second Amendment. His, uh, his freedom of speech is also protected by the First Amendment in the United States. But what about boundaries of uh, such freedom of speech? Uh, I mean, during the presidential campaign, some of the candidates uh, went as far as to use some sexual innuendos to suggest that their competitors uh, are not good guys and therefore cannot uh, live up to the expectations of their constituency. They also use words like liar to denounce their competitors. I mean, such abusive use of words uh, uh, could uh, introduce uh, yet another interesting discussion about cultural differences. Uh, I mean, some of the Chinese students uh, argued uh, in their online debate that uh, this man, uh, Ni Han Xiao, may have been singled out as a scapegoat. It does have some strong overtones of racial discrimination against the Chinese students in this uh, cultural context. So what do you make of their concerns? Uh, I wouldn't take it as a sort of discrimination against Chinese students. I would think this kind of emphasis on discrimination would actually exacerbate the situation of uh, all the uh, Chinese students now staying in the United States. But from another perspective, I would differentiate what is called public speech and private speech. So public speech, as you just said, all the pre presidential candidates, they can use very extreme language during the campaign. But for private speech, you have to be very careful. So in this scenario, there is the relationship of the conflict interest between professor and students. To use this kind of uh, language to actually threaten the privacy and also the, the safety of the professor. So this is a private speech. It's very, uh, I think, highlighted in uh, the, uh, the American scenario, probably. Uh, but in Chinese scenario, this public speech and the private speech do not actually discern very clearly. So this is exactly what I call the intercultural incompetence and lack of media literacy. Talking about public speeches, uh, Edward and uh, 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 Zhou, um don't you think it's necessary for both the Chinese uh, teachers and parents of those who, who uh, would be sent to the other side of the Pacific Ocean to pursue their academic degree, that they should be alerted to the cultural differences, gun-related culture, uh, uh, gun-related violence on the campus, as well as, uh, you know, uh, a particular attention to online wording, uh, private or public speeches. There, I mean, there are sea differences between the two forms of manifestations. Yeah. You know, some Chinese think that they can speak perfectly English, therefore they know all the nuance people will understand whether they are making joke they or they are serious. I think uh, this is a kind of cultural difference that uh, Chinese students should be careful because put something on the uh, social media without a uh, context can be sometimes dangerous. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about First Amendment, even in the country where freedom of speech is very high, like in France, but after this is a terrorist attack in November. Uh, some people put a you know, word in the social media, they were arrested. And in the normal context, it wouldn't happen in a country like France uh, because of those people, everybody was thinking it's a joke. But in that context, it's become a very serious uh, threat. Are you alluding to actually the culture of fears since 911? Because mm -hmm. the mere mention of uh, bluff, online bluff, uh, wielding a gun, brandishing a weapon, uh, that could be something very serious, right? Edward? No, no I, I, I totally agree, but I also think that, that we have to have freedom of speech, and unless it's like, if you say something imminent, like you said a bomb on an airplane, or you're going through passport control, I get that, but when you get into this hate speech, and when you get into a situation where someone's taking a picture with a gun and saying some comments, you know what, it's a little bit much. And this goes into the idea of political correctness and everything else. And, and you know, I, I understand what happened in 1991. I understand all these kinds of issues. But there are 6,000 Chinese in every single state of the United States. And the vast majority of them, this is like a freak exa example of what's happened, are all law-abiding and are trying their best to, to function in the society and are welcomed, I think, both ways. I think the, the, the stuff is an anomaly, frankly, but it, it's unfortunate. But I think, you know, this is a real uh, exception. Uh, Professor Chen Bin, what do you think of the importance of uh, rule education and character education? Now, that poor guy, the, uh, actually, he's a criminal. Um, uh, Lu Gang, who killed five mm. and paralyzed uh, six uh, back in the year 1991 on the same mm. campus of the University of Iowa. Now, mm. um, it seems he has lost control of his own character. 
Um, uh, he, he, I wonder if he's uh, usually introverted by character. And therefore, he was not able to communicate with others when he felt depressed. <laughs> therefore, he turned to the use of guns for a solution. Now, how important is it for character education and indeed for rural education? In fact, let me extend the point a little bit to uh, the uh, third presidential debate between President Obama and, and his arrival uh, last time. He said he accused China of uh, performing poorly in a rule-based world. Now, rural education seems to be something that may highlight the cultural differences between China and the West, right? Yes, I, I would agree with this, but I think your mention of Rugang case uh, is a little bit exceptional because uh, what actually what happened with Rugang is actually targeted not only to American professor but also to his fellow Chinese student. But in this case, I would still emphasize that uh, the Chinese student, uh, especially for this one child generation, they have a very uh, kind of self centered uh, perspective. And also, I don't think they, they discern what I just call the public speech and private speech very clearly. In this case, again, I would say it is very important for the professor who actually uh, uh, fire a complaint for the authority. So, this is the, the line. If you, you can criticize President Obama openly, this is the freedom of speech. But if you criticize a professor and your professor feel very uh, kind of uh, uh, uneasily, so he can actually file a complaint. So I still remember when I actually started my career in the United States, uh, my uh, term, uh, chairman of the department gave me a lesson on sexual harassment. He said, you have to be very careful uh, to comment on any particular, uh, your female colleague. But you can vent your opinion of, about feminism, but you cannot comment on particular colleagues of your own uh, uh, community. So you have to discern public and private, which I do not, do not think Chinese teacher, including myself, had tell students enough. Well, uh, well, I have to leave you there for the moment. You are watching dialogue with uh, Mr. Tao Jingzhou and Mr. Edward Lehman and Professor Shen Bin uh, for a while. We have to be back after the short break. Stay with us. Well, Edward and Jingzhou, do you think a father of this expelled student stand any chance of uh, reversing the disciplinary decision by the University of Alva because he's seeking legal advice. I think that he's a, as a father, he should do his best, try to send back his uh, son That's to the human. university. Yeah, he's a pretty human, and uh, they should have some legal remedies available to the student. Uh, try to file, you know, appeal uh, with the university for such a disciplinary sanction. Yeah, take a take a look at it. Just, just out of curiosity. will it pay off? Yeah, will, you know, will, will it work? Well, there, I mean, what would have happened? I mean, is is to be able to file against the first of all against this university is one process, and then any governmental thing about leaving the country is another process. But uh, Professor uh, Mr. Tao is right that. Basically, he has 10 days to file an appeal from the time that this has happened or that there, a decision came down. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then, um, and then there, there, there's a possibility it could work. I think it, it would bring forward evidence. And I mean, that's what the whole system is about. And I don't think it should be hopeless. I don't think we should have a lynching party. But first of all, let's clarify at least the one thing. Do you think this has amounted to the degree of a deportation? I mean, his father denies that his, fa his son has been deported. I mean, how long does it take uh, to deport uh, an individual in the United States? Yeah, from what I, I, I understand, I agree with the father. I do not believe that he was a, a, a deported from the United States. I think he left voluntarily. I think that if you go through the process, you, you have due process, which is the Fourth Amendment. We've talked about the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about the Third, but now the Fourth. So due process means that anyone, a United States citizen or otherwise, anyone whose feet are on the ground, have the same rights, and so essentially, except they can't vote. Well, that reminds me of uh, uh, *Bridge of Spies*, a Hollywood movie. And, uh, the Soviet spy stands the same chance, uh, enjoying the same sure. equal access to law protection. Exactly. So, uh, the, so there's an immigration court that they could go to, and then the, you can appeal that to the uh, immigration board, and then you can appeal to the federal district court. So, it's quite a long process. It could take a long, long time. If he doesn't go through and get a lawyer, then it, it could be done very quickly, and the, they would just do unilateral ex parte against him. So. I believe he was not a victim of deportation. I do believe uh, a subject of deportation. I do believe that he does have rights. And he could enter the country. If he went through the process, he would be banned for 10 years from entering the country. And he hasn't gone through that process. He left voluntarily, it seems like. I, I think what he should do is try to apologize hmm. 
I tried to surround all his arms, uh, weapons. I said I will no longer carry any kind of, you know, dangerous weapon with me, and uh, apologize to the professor. Maybe he get, you know, sympathy from uh, the relevant professor and the uh, president of the university. But just in a small side note, you know, there, a guy called Robert Oppenheimer, he was called the father of the nuclear bomb, he tried to poison, this is in the book Outliers, he tried to poison his professor, it, it, he was in UK at the university, he's American, uh, mm -hmm. so he was only suspended. And so this, this gentleman, and this is in the 30s, 1930s, but now all of a sudden this Chinese gentleman who's at a foreigner student uh, school has been expelled. So I mean, a lot of it is EQ, I think, as well, and that was what was brought up in the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Let me go back to the issue of uh, rural education. Hmm. Uh, we, we've been talking about the issue of uh, boundaries of uh, freedom of speech. Now, is it true that the Chinese uh, have a poor awareness about the importance of rules, uh, and uh, particularly in the area of uh, freedom of speech? They don't know uh, uh, which is uh, an area for public speech. Uh, which is uh, for private speech, and how dangerous is it to uh, be uh, politically incorrect uh, in a country like the United States, where you have uh, developed a strong culture of fears since 911? That's uh, repeatedly what I emphasized uh, in, in, on this discussion. Um, I think you know we have a you know one-child policy. All the children are kind of spoiled. That's the first thing, and the second thing is we have a worry you know, exam-centered education system and not really the rule-based society, etc. You can always use your relationship to go through some difficult situations. Mm -hmm. so all this, I think, uh, kind of increased the exposure of those Chinese students for the breach of the rule in a country such as the U.S. And I also think, I mean, just to follow on what uh, Mr. Tao said, is that in France, in, in China, where there are civil law systems, there's no plea bargaining, but there is compensation to victims. I think a lot, and so this is like kind of known in the Chinese system. Now, if you try to compensate, quote unquote, air quotes, uh, uh, victims, that's seen as bribery, and so that would be inappropriate. So I think the, the, the parents, like uh, we were talking about earlier, they might want to help out, but they don't want to do it in the Chinese context. They want to do it in an American context. Now, they can plea bargain down, um, they can mitigate this situation, but th that's, that's a key difference. So in China, it looks like you're helping, you're actually compensating the victim before you go to trial, and then you're, you're mitigating the situation. And in, 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 China, in the United States, it's different. So. Uh, let me cross over to Professor Shanbi, who is still on the phone. Hello. Yes. These years, increasingly, um, uh, descendants and the second generation of the wealthy family, of the government officials, uh, are being sent to the United States uh, and to Europe for a tertiary education. Now these guys, some of them uh, have been spoiled, obviously, not only because of the one-child policy, who have been, uh, I mean, which uh, means uh, those uh, only child would be regarded as the uh, little emperor in their own family, individual families. Now these young kids go to the United States without uh, knowing uh, that uh, it is politically incorrect to brag about the wealth, to brag about the racing cars, uh, and and therefore. Uh, they have been spoiled by our own culture. How dangerous is that? Uh, particularly what has embarrassed uh, not only their parents, but also those uh, who talk about the issue of education, that these kids from China, you know, uh, they, uh, they, they tend to plagiarism. That's why they fail the exams. Yeah. So they, this actually uh, related to something what we talk about national image. Uh, I still think uh, Mr. Tao mentioned the uh, Guanxi relationship. Uh, I still think many would think a relationship is the core of Chinese culture, which I think is totally uh, wrong because we have to abide by the universal values such as rule of law. So this is a very important uh, occasion that for every Chinese professor, including myself, to em actually emphasize the universal value like rule of law to our students. But I want to uh, remind another uh, issue, that is the social media surveillance. I think this incident also reflect uh, this kind of mythology uh, actually existing among many Chinese students that there is no social media surveillance in the United States. But actually, the whole incident proved that social me uh, media surveillance mm -hmm. is even tighter in this case of like a private speech. Of course, because the United States is both of the uh, NSA, National Security Agency, and Edward Snowden, yes. of course. 
Yes. So, uh, but Adam Snowden is more like the nationwide, the public issue. But this case also related to private issues. So even uh, like a student who threatens a professor, it could be also be surveillance by the social media system. So this is also a case that reminds many Chinese students, you have to be very careful when you're venting your uh, anger via social media, even in the United States. But most of them would still believe that in China, they are surveillance, but in the United States, they're not, which is totally a kind of mythology. Well, this is yet another revelation, um, not by Edward Snowden, by the way, mm -hmm. but by uh, a tragic case. Uh, he's uh, been expelled. So what kind of lessons should we learn from this case? Uh, whenever you post something in the social media, mm -hmm. you sh without any context, you should be careful for the misinterpretation. So that's why if you want to make a joke, you know, you got to do it, uh, you know, expressly. And also, you should make sure that in the fragile society after 9-11, uh, you know, anything which are terrorist related will have a bigger consequence. So uh, that's why I think Chinese student should be careful in the future in having such a kind of a joke in the social media. I'm sorry for this uh, man who's called Ni Hanxiang, whose American dream may have been ruined as a result of the bluff, the faint threat on the internet. But uh, uh, what, what do you think of uh, Jing Zhou's concerns that uh, um, you know, people don't have a clear awareness about the consequences uh, online? Because uh, his abusive use of the wording, uh, like uh, brandishing the guns, mm. may have been abused for the second time. Right. You know, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, there are certain issues. I mean, we had an eggshell plaintiff, which would be the University of Iowa. So this has happened to them in 1991, killed professors, killed heads of departments. I, that happened, killed a Chinese national, as Professor Scher talked about, which was his roommate, Mr. Liu Gong's roommate. Um, but the other thing that's interesting is that, uh, um, you know, we have to be able to protect uh, their their ability to, to do and to be able to function and not to be able to monitor all that they're doing. Uh, and so, I, I, you know, I, I do feel for the young man, for sure, and I think he's made a mistake. I don't think it was clear and it was eminent that he was going to go over and shoot anybody. I, you know, I, I don't think that the an anomaly would be uh, Chinese students failing. I think the American students are pretty uh, pretty good at that. That's what I thought was most surprising about the story. So, um, I you know, I, it's tragic. I think that it call it, it, and it's a, it's a uh, an anomaly. But I think that it calls for trying to have cross cultural education. And I think it's great that Chinese students are going to the United States. Uh, Jing Zhou, you, you you suggested that this uh, uh, student's father should have apologized uh, mm. online to the university authorities and to the professors whose life were endangered because of the uh, abusive wording of uh, Ni Hanxia. Now, do you think this student? Uh, stands a chance of being sent back to the United States given his track record. If his father succeeded in seeking legal advice. Uh, <laughs> I sincerely think that uh, this can happen. Uh, this could happen? Yeah, could happen. What do you think? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, the National Rifle Association will try to welcome him back with open arms. I mean, he, had a, <laughs> he had a legal permit to carry <laughs> weapons. I mean, I, I, I don't see No other should have no talked weapon. to yeah. the National Rifle Association about this case. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.